everybody. I'm Dr. John Shovik, and I'm here to talk about GPIO pins, the way to conquer the world. Well, at least to run the world. This is going to be a pretty short talk. As you see, I've been kicked out of the bar. But, you know, I always like talking, giving a joke to begin with. So I want to start out with a science joke. Okay, this neutron walks into a bar and sits down at the bar. And he asks the bartender, well, I'd like a beer. How much? And uh, the bartender looks at him and says, no charge. Not bad, huh? huh. Well, use that one the next time you're uh, trying to chat somebody up at the bar, and they'll probably just laugh at you, right? Well, hey, back to our topic tonight. GPIO pins. This is a great stuff on these little computers. GPIO stands for General Purpose Input Output. And what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about what are GPIO pins, what do you use them for, and what are some of the real uses? What are, the, what are you reading values, reading other things, and some of the kind of things you might want to control with GPIO pins? Pretty simple. But first, let's start out with what is a GPIO pin? General Purpose Input Output. They're pins on various processors that aren't dedicated to anything. They're designed to, for you to do input or output single bits. Okay, that's a single bit. A GPIO pin is a single bit, either input or output. Let's talk about the kind of output pins you have. But first, let me give you just a feeling about how many people have GPIO pins and what are they used for. Here's our famous Raspberry Pi. There's about 20 GPIO pins up here. These GPIO pins operated 3.3 volts. More about that later. That's on a Raspberry Pi. And in an Arduino type product, you have even more GPIO pins. This is an Arduino Uno. Let's turn it over so you can read it. And a lot of these pins up here are general purpose input output pins. Even the uh, pins down here, which connect to the 10-bit analog digital converter that we talked about in our last talk, those can also be used as general purpose input output pins. So there's a lot of input output on Arduino. Those two things make that really cool. Those two devices really cool because you can control so many different things with that. Here's a board containing an ESP8266, another very popular chip. This is programmed like an Arduino in most cases, but it has a lot more memory than an Arduino, but unfortunately it's very, very short of GPIO pins. There's only about maybe two or three that are available on this chip at all for use of general purpose I.O. Once you take away the serial port, once you take away the uh, I squared C interface, you only have a few couple of pins on there. Eh, not too cool. But anyway, we'll come back to that. Now, a general purpose input output pin. First, let's talk about output. Okay, in the digital world, we have a signal that's above about 2.5 volts is a one, is below 2.5 volts is a zero. So I'm just going to call them zeros and ones, even though they're different. On a Raspberry Pi, as I mentioned, a one will go up to about 3.3 volts. A zero will be down near ground somewhere, near zero volts. On an Arduino, it'll go to five volts and then go down to zero volts. By the way, that means that these GPIO pins aren't really good to connect directly between an Arduino and a Raspberry Pi because you have 3.3 volts on one end and 5 volts on the other end. You can blow up the pins, the input-output pins on a Raspberry Pi. Tougher to do an Arduino, but you can still do it. So when you connect directly from an Arduino to a Raspberry Pi, you need to plan for that. But anyway, an ESP8266 is also a 3.3 volt device. So you can connect directly to a Raspberry Pi back and forth of there, but not to an Arduino. So we have to worry a little bit about what is a one, what is a zero on these parts. Five volts, 3.3 volts. That's the difference. Now, if I set the bit inside by using software to a one, it'll output that high voltage and that becomes a one. Now, you can do all sorts of these things with these bits. Well, it's just one bit. Well, we'll talk a little later about just the type of things you can do with these bits. Now, let's talk about input. Input is a little trickier. Now, as I said, above about 2.5 volts is a one, below 2.5 volts is a zero, and that's kind of the way the circuitry works. Not quite, 
but it's it's pretty it's pretty close to being that halfway between your power voltage and your ground voltage. So 3.3 might be a little lower than 2.5. If you're at 5 volts, it's about 2.5 volts. Okay, now input coming into something. If a signal is a 1, if a digital output is outputting at 5 volts, let's say, or 3.3 volts on the Raspberry Pi, your circuitry will read it as a 1, which means 1, 0, 1, 0. That's reading this. Now, when you actually use an input on a GPIO, sometimes you have an output device that will only pull it down. It's called an open drain, and it'll only pull something down, but lets it float if uh, the device isn't turned on. Well, you have to deal with that, because if you let it float, you don't know whether it's gonna end up being a one or a zero. These things just happen. They move around, they float. That's why it's calling floating, these voltage levels of float. So what you do, you put up a pull-up resistor, more on that in a later lecture. You put a pull-up resistor that might pull it up to five volts, and then when the open drain turns on and pulls it down to zero, it'll take that voltage all the way very close to zero. And hence, a zero voltage, a zero uh, digital value. Okay, so we have input, we have output. We can do things with these inputs and outputs. In our last lecture, we talked about how we can uh, turn a analog signal to a digital signal. Here we're really talking about just reading digital signals in. But we can do some very interesting things with that. So let's talk about what you use GPIO inputs and outputs for. Well, the kind of the simplest thing you ever think of is if you ever bring an Arduino, Arduino or a Raspberry Pi, you might do what we call a hardware um, hello world. And what that is is you make an LED blink on and off. You do that by setting your pin to 1, 0, 1, 0. So you can turn it on and off. That's using an output. Well, what about an input? You can hook up a switch out there that has a, that nasty little pull-up up to, um, you know, 5 volts or 3.3 volts. Then you hit the button, and it, shorts, it takes it to ground, which makes it a 0 volt. Now, turns out, do you know mechanical switches bounce? And they will read 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Over, you know, maybe 100 milliseconds. Well, 100 milliseconds is a tenth of a second. That's a long time to a processor running 16 million instructions a cycle. So we'll talk about that in another lecture. But you can read switches. That's interesting stuff. You can, read, you can drive LEDs. You can do all these sorts of things by writing out, reading into your unit. Basically, GPIOs allow you to connect with the real world. That's why we call people that uh, hook up Raspberry Pis, they're doing physical computing. They're making the computers do something out in the real world, whether it's turning off a switch, whether it's turning on an LED, whether it's controlling a relay that turns the lights on your house or lights up a Christmas tree. All these things can be done with your little computer driving those GPIO inputs and outputs. Very cool. This really makes these little computers very flexible. So let's talk about it. We talked about that controlling relays, controlling LEDs. So let's talk about some of the other things you can use these for. Let me uh, just show you what a relay looks like. This is a relay, happens to be a Grove connector, but it's driven by a GPIO. You know, turn your GPIO one, the, um, the relay is on. With a zero, the relay is off. Now you clever little people that are zooming in on this, this is actually called a latching relay. And you end up using two GPIO pins, one to turn it on and then one to turn it off. And it stays latched. It stays on, stays off, even if you turn the voltage off. So, you know, that's a special kind of relay. But it's still really cool. If you energize a relay with just a GPIO pin, you can draw quite a bit of current. More about current in the future. But these GPIO pins can't put out very much current you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 milliamps. You're not going to drive something that needs a 1,000 milliamps out of a GPIO. You have to put some kind of amplifier on it. Okay, so one bit. That's not very interesting. Well, how do we get around that? Well, we'll come back to that in a moment. But first, let's talk about this. Uh, some of you guys may recognize this. This is actually an ultrasonic distance detector, and it works by using one output, GPIO output, and one GPIO input, okay? And how it works is you take the output and set it up to a one, 
and then you're listening to the input. And depending, because your computer is so fast, you know, sound bounces over here to the computer screen and then bounces back here. And because your computer is so fast, you can measure the time interval. It took the distance to get from here to here, or the sound, I should say, from here to here. Measuring that then, hey, you've got the distance in front of this. You can use this for robots. You can use this for people detection, all sorts of different things. Two GPIO pins, one output to send a pulse out and one input to read when that pulse comes back. You have time between those two things, you've got the distance. That's pretty cool. Now, what about some other devices? You guys have probably heard about serial devices. Serial devices are only use one input, but you transmit sequences that are timed. So you type 101010 and you do that in a certain way, you know it's a byte of data. Okay, so you're using one input, one output on a serial device, but you can send lots and lots of information by using the timing to send 101010 and so on, and then you can receive data back the same way. You've got a couple of issues with that. For one thing, you need to know when the bytes start and when the bytes, well, not so much when the bytes quit, but you need to know when the bytes start. That's called framing, and it's beyond our talk today, but there's a number of very easy ways to do that. And so we can communicate lots of information through these serials. You know, speaking of serial signals, um, you know USB, right? You know what USB stands for? Universal Serial Bus. There's only one input, one output. Actually, it's bidirectional. But in any case, there's one input, one output, and it's serial, sending data in and out that way. Just like a GPIO pin, except it's done very, uh, very cleverly, so you can get a lot of data across that. Okay, now, one of the things we talked about was this little device here, this poor ESP8266 that doesn't have very many input outputs on it, which means you can't do as many fun things with a little device. Well, there's solutions to this. Here's a particular device. This is called a GPIO extender, and you can stick this on a Raspberry Pi, an Arduino, or an 8266. This is a product we sell at SwitchDoc. And this adds eight GPIO signals to your device. You can hook up to a Raspberry Pi or Arduino, or even the lowly 82 ESP8266 that only has a few different GPIOs on it. These GPIOs take a little more programming, but you can interrupt. Oh, there's a scary word, interrupts. We'll have to have a talk about interrupts in the very near future. But you can make these interrupt your processor so one of them changes, you know what it is. You have to use what's called an I squared C bus here, which is a bus that's used uh, uh, to connect back and forth to various sensors and devices. More on a future talk about that. But you can have just as many GPIO as you want on any device by using one of these little extenders. So in conclusion, Let's summarize. That's always a good thing to do. Okay, GPIO stands for General Purpose Input Output. All the processors you use have a few, at least a few, a Raspberry Pi and Arduino have a lot of general purpose input output bits that you can design your circuits and you can read your sensors off of. Very much like our friend, the little ultrasonic detector that you can make into, put in your little robot, kind of looks like robot eyes, but they're actually little speakers and receivers. And you can use the GPIO to drive those. You can use GPIOs to drive LEDs. You can use GPIOs to read data, serial and others, coming back from other devices, like the ultrasonic detector, but there's hundreds of other devices that can do that too. So why do we want GPIOs? Because we want to control the world. And that's always a good thing. At least I think it's fun. I like GPIOs. I use them for a lot. Yeah, granted, I do a lot of LEDs and make pretty lights and everything, but I also use it in robots. Um, we use ultrasonic detectors in robots all the time. We use all sorts of different pulses. And then there's something called a LIDAR. Whoa, what's a LIDAR? Well, it's a laser ultrasonic detector, basically, but it's using light instead of, um, instead of sound, but you're still measuring the time it takes light to get out and back there. You're probably not doing that with your uh, 16 megahertz processor, but they have a processor built in that's fast enough to measure those distances or a piece of hardware. So you get data back in serially to you saying, wow, there's all sorts of stuff out there. 
That's how they build self-driving cars, by the way. They use LIDARs. They're kind of like really fancy ultrasonic devices. Well, that's all I have for tonight. I am done. So, you know, please don't hesitate to email us some questions at Switch Talk Lab, or if you have suggestions for topics, let us know. We'll be happy to do them. That's all for tonight. Good night.